Hey guys, Rocket Cat here. Today we are going to be looking at Tempest Growth in Tempest Rising. This is a new RTS with a preview build right now available on Steam until August 28. So I recommend you go try it out if you have not already, because on this channel we are going to probably be doing a lot of Tempest Rising because I'm super stoked for this game. And in this video, we are going to be talking about Tempest. That is Tempest Fields, and this is the main resource in the game, and it's crucially important to understand its basic mechanics so that we can hopefully learn how to harvest these things correctly and just generally have a strong understanding, a strong basis of how the economy will work in this game. With no further ado, let's get started. Okay, so first up, I want to show the different states that um, of these pods and how much uh, they yield. So first of all, if we harvest one of these big pods versus one of these mid-sized pods versus one of these small pods. You'll see that the big pod is as a full harvester. This is going to yield us 800 credits. This is going to yield us 400 credits, and this is going to yield us 200 credits. Okay, next I want to show you guys the Tempest Growth Timers. So, as you can see in our previous test, we harvested all three of these at the same time, and it resulted in them regrowing at the same time, or more or less at the same time. There was a slight um, desync in the harvesting animation completion, but yeah, they all grew at the same time. And what I'm now going to show you is that these grow at set intervals. So uh, what we're going to do, we're going to harvest this, harvest this out, and then we're going to fast forward and we're going to wait for each stage of growth. So we're going to wait for it to go to first stage, second stage, and then third stage. So first of all, I'm going to harvest this one, and then I will be back in one minute where we should have another first stage pod grow. So let's harvest this. And I'll fast forward. Okay, one minute has passed and we have grown a first stage pod again. We will now be back in two minutes when we will see a second stage pod appear. Okay, two minutes have passed and we have reached our second stage pod. I am now going to go make some coffee and we are going to wait for a whopping four minutes for this to go into a third stage pod. Let's watch it happen. And there we have a third stage pod. Uh, Four minutes passed in total and uh, between the second and third stage and in total from um, this being fully mined out to going into a fully regrown thing it has taken a total of seven minutes not a short amount of time but not bad so uh, the next thing I want to demonstrate is vine death so what happens basically when we harvest too much So in this case, actually, I'm not going to harvest this one quite yet. So we see this node has these vines stretched over it. And the moment where we um, delete all or mine out all of its adjacent one uh, adjacent um, pods, this you'll see a, an animation. So this one is counting, even though it's diagonal, it is counting as an adjacent pod. So we're going to harvest this one out. And you'll see in a second, an animation will appear and these vines will die. So these vines die. And the way this works is that once this is a valid, um, once this is growing again, and for this to be considered growing again, we're going to need to grow a pod here and then a pod here. But we'll get into growth mechanics a little bit later. But once this is growing, it will take 30 seconds 
from the time when it is a valid growth spot again to when the vines regrow, re regrow. And then it will start the one minute timer to regrow the first stage pod. So it adds 30 seconds to the um, Tempest regrowth process when you kill vines like this. So I'm gonna fast forward and we're gonna watch this happen. It'll take one minute to regrow this, one minute to regrow this, and then 30 seconds to regrow those vines, and then one minute after that to regrow the Tempest pod. Okay, this has regrown and it is now going to take 30 seconds for these vines to regrow. And there the vines have regrown. And now let's wait for the first stage pod to appear. And one minute has passed and we can see that this has regrown as expected. That covers vine death and the timers for um, spawning, basically. That's all the rules for the timers of spawning. Okay, let's take another moment to just touch on those vine death rules. As we saw, this was, if we harvest out just these two, this is insufficient for these vines to die. This diagonal here, oops, let's not mine out the diagonal. This diagonal is sufficient to keep these vines alive. However, we saw that in order for this to grow, it was insufficient to just have this diagonal. Instead, this needed both this pod and this pod to be present in order for this to grow. This is actually also the case on this one over here, in which case um, you need both of these in order for this to grow. However, for pods or for nodes that are less on the fringes, you'll just need one in any direction, diagonals included for it to regrow. In some cases, there are some exceptions, and we're going to have to learn more about exactly how this works as we get more exposure to Tempest fields. The next thing I want to talk about is um, what happens when you partially harvest a node. The first thing we'll do here is we will fill this up with 600 Tempest. So this harvester will have 600 Tempest in it. It will be three quarters full. And now we are gonna harvest one of these 800 nodes. This means that there's gonna be 600 in this node. And what this means is that it's not small enough to downgrade to a second stage pod. Um, but it's, it's actually not going to change at all. So you'll see that there's no visual indication that this pod now has 600 and we can prove that this has 600 by harvesting this. And you'll see that this harvester actually only goes three quarters full. So what's going on here? Um, basically, once you have a pod at the third stage, here we go, this only has 600 Tempest in it now. And yeah, the only way to make it grow again is to harvest it down to a second stage again so um an alternative of course you can so this is this has room for 600 so that means if we subtract 800 from this or if we subtract 600 because this has room for 600 left in this harvester then it will revert back to a first stage pod because it will have 200 in it so let's watch that happen There we go. So this is now a first stage pod because we harvested 600 from a full stage pod, bringing it back down to 200. If we only harvested, um, like if you only harvest 400 from a third stage pod, then it will go back down to stage two. If you harvest 800, it goes all the way back down to nothing. Um, so I hope that demonstrates what happens when you partially harvest things. Uh, another thing to note with partially harvesting is that it will reset the timers for it to grow to a next stage. So let's say we um, we take this guy over here. Uh, we're waiting for um, a first stage pod to grow here. Actually, let's do it on this one. So this is a first stage pod. We need a different harvester. And it has been growing for some time, but we're gonna actually reset the clock 
on its regrowth. So we've nibbled a little bit from it, and now it's going to take a moment from the time we nibbled it for it to regrow. So let's just wait to the one minute and show that the timer has reset on this pod. As a side note here, we notice that this regrew, uh, this is just to say that um, nibbling this pod did not at all affect the growth rates of the adjacent pod. Okay, let's keep waiting for this one to grow. Okay, two minutes have passed since the time where we skimmed a little bit off the top and we see that it, it regrows. This is all to say that touching a node at all is going to reset the timer on the node. This is sort of an important concept to understand because while your harvesters might be going around, they might be, uh, in some cases, partially collecting um, pods. Usually not if it's just the AI harvester, but say you manually um, sent this guy. Let's, let's take a guy who's 75% full and we manually harvest this guy. Well, what if this pod what if this pod was like five seconds away from adding the 400 Tempest into it that gets added once you grow it to the third stage pod? If you were just like five seconds away, you've basically deleted 400 Tempest uh, in order to gain an immediate 200 Tempest. So this is uh, all to say this is something you should watch out for. Try to... Uh, if you're if you're manually controlling your harvesters which you're you're probably not but this is something that can happen there's sort of latent tempest that builds up in your field it's it's tempest that you've paid the time for but it may or may not be harvested depending on whether or not um, it gets skimmed off the top a little bit okay next up let's talk about tempest growth in general so you'll notice that over here there's this um there's this little tiny field, and you may have noticed in your playthrough that if you harvest if you harvest this, even if we just harvest a tiny bit of this, this is never going to regrow. This is to say that growth does not come from other pods. If if I no matter how long I wait, this is never going to regrow. Um, I can harvest this out, and I mean I could I could pause the game for two hours or whatever it's it's not going to it's not going to grow back if we harvest both of the both of them i've tried every variation of this it does not grow back so what then if if growth does not come from other pods where does growth come from and the answer to that is this crater here quick excursus from the multiplayer showcase we see different size craters so for instance this crater here seems like it's larger, like it's going to affect a larger um, period of time. It's going to be providing that regrowth to a larger surface area of the Tempest field. So this is all to say that we haven't seen everything yet and we don't fully understand exactly how these craters are going to work out. Let's move on. So this crater is the cornerstone of growth. And if we mine out all of these, if we mine out this field completely, then uh, the growth will begin starting in the nodes surrounding the crater and it will expand out from there. Let's say, let's, let's do a test where we cut off this guy. Let's leave that one alone. Okay. So in this arrangement, uh, this one is growing, this one is growing, but these two are not growing. So the path to the crater also matters. So this is not growing right now, even though it is still here, it is not growing. This one is not growing because it does not have an adjacent growing pod. So even though it has an adjacent pod, that doesn't matter. And even though it's technically connected via these roots to this crater, that doesn't matter. What matters is that it has a valid path of living pods to the crater via these roots. And there are some, I want to say, intricacies to exactly how this path gets drawn and under what conditions a pod is considered growing. And 
I will explain them as best as I can observe them. So we will see here that these two pods now regrow because this is adjacent here, this is adjacent here, and everything is cool. This one is now growing. This one is not growing yet. Even though this has an adjacent one here, there are some rules in which diagonals are valid versus diagonals not being valid um, sites for growth. And this is a case, this node is a particular case where both of these need to be growing in order for this to be growing. Okay, so let's, let's take a look at this example with this node. What does it take for this to grow? Well, what happens if we take out all of these? Okay, so here we are. The question I have is, is this diagonal sufficient for this to be considered growing? Let's find out. We're going to wait. Okay, we can already kind of tell by now because we harvested these at more or less the same time, but we can see that this is not regrown. And it will regrow now that this guy's here, but it was not sufficient for this diagonal to grow this one. Now, there is an interesting catch, and I'm going to prune the field a little bit to set up the next demonstration. Okay, so we actually saw a demonstration of this already. So one minute after this one grew, this one grew all by its lonesome. Um, and why is it that this one was able to regrow on a diagonal because this one was growing and then this timer started. So this one was already considered growing. And as far as I can tell, the reason why this was considered growing was because it had another adjacent one. Even though this one was not growing, it did allow this diagonal to provide growing status to this one. So because this one was here and it was a pod, this one received growing status. Now let's reproduce that by pruning the field a little bit more. And we are going to try to grow this one by even if we harvest these three, it, so long as we keep this one alive, this one will re regrow thanks to the diagonal from this one. So let's do that. Okay. So in one minute from now, this should regrow from the, the diagonal path from this um, this guy. Now, by the way, I call these diagonals because if if you go like this, this is sort of a grid setup, right? So if you manage, if you um, imagine this as a two D grid, this is sort of um, these ones are directly adjacent, whereas um, these ones here are sort of diagonal in this two D grid. And everything has regrown. All three of these popped up at the same time. And that is um, simply because uh, they're all valid. Um, these, these ones next to the crater will always regrow after one minute. No matter what, the vines will never die. They will always, once they're harvested, after one minute, they will regrow. But this one is not the case. So what happened here? Well, it actually received the diagonal growth um, from this one. Even though when when we didn't we set up this thing exactly the same way, it did not receive growth from this one when this guy was not present. So this is all to say that diagonals are allowed, but um, there are some special conditions under which diagonals are allowed. Next, we're gonna, we're gonna set up the next test, so I'll be back right away. So while we wait for present me to set up that test. Past me is going to be testing. This is an AI harvester. This is not controlled at all. I think I manually control it a couple times because of pathfinding issues, but otherwise this is completely AI controlled harvester. And this is to demonstrate that an AI controlled harvester will completely mine out this Tempest field. If you do not touch it at all, it will simply exhaust every single pod. And then it's going to be standing there waiting and it's probably gonna drive off to another field. So here it goes. It's it basically it has no intelligence about what is the optimal um, way to harvest this field, and it's going to result in less sustainable fields than what you could achieve if you manually know what's going on. So here at the very end, the harvester is starting to wait around, and I have to manually control him. Okay, so what I've done here is I've arranged some critical nodes in um, sort of a pattern that will allow as many nodes as possible to be considered growing. And what we're going to do, we're going to manually control one harvester 
And I've tried to remove as much uh, extra. So I've tried to harvest these down to seedlings. Um, I've tried to harvest as much extra Tempest from here as possible to show that um, it wasn't the extra buffer um, that allows us to do this, but rather it is simply the um, inherent growth rates in this Tempest field that allow us to take one harvester and harvest this thing endlessly in a completely sustainable manner by optimizing the growth rates in this field. So I'm just going to time lapse this for a while and you can watch as the field is completely sustainable. So while we're watching this happen, I want to talk for a moment about how I made this. So if we look at this diagram, this is the Tempest field represented on a 2D grid. And one thing you might notice is that because 200 Tempest appears in first stage pods after one minute, that means that that node is growing at 3.33 Tempest per second, whereas on other nodes, it's growing on 1.66 per second. And if it's dead or if it's at a third stage pod or whatever, it's growing at zero. So basically, uh, how I designed this was I looked at this grid and I tried to look at the growth rules as best I could and design an optimal setup for optimal growth. So the idea is that we want to be growing as many of these first stage pods as possible while also keeping as many of the um, first and second stage pods growing so that they're also contributing tempest per second. And that's how we arrived at this pattern for the field. And actually during this process, I noticed a little bit of an error. The top, um, or rather the leftmost uh, ones um, that you see at the top left, they actually aren't growing. So these ones here are, it would seem, not growing. So uh, there was a slight mistake, I think, in my arrangement, but we were still able to make this field sustainable. So let's get to a final question. Why should you care? Well, honestly, you're not going to be manually controlling your harvesters to make sure that your fields are at peak sustainability and all that kind of stuff. You're not. You're going to be playing your match. You're going to be controlling your troops. You're going to be building stuff. You're not going to be worrying too much about your harvester. So why then are we bothering at all? Well, in my opinion, it's important to understand the basic concepts of your economy. Like you need to, the more you know, basically, right? The more you know you'll be able to, let's say you're on the middle of the map and you're about to sacrifice a tapest field. The enemy is pushing into it, but you can harvest a couple of extra things to make that field even worse. So you might prioritize um, certain nodes because you understand how they work. You might just manually send your harvester real quick to harvest some critical nodes on that tempest field so that that tempest field is going to suck for a long time. And that there might be four minutes before that tempest field is like actually good again. So I think that in that case, uh, it's important. It also is important in the case, like just you can at you're at your base and you look at your tempest field and you're like, I think I have eight minutes left on two harvesters before this um, runs out. And uh, you, you kind of have both a intuitive and a theoretical grounding in why that is the case. And it just in, improves your understanding of your economy, the situation of your economy, and also the situation of your opponent's economy. So yeah, uh, that has been Tempest Mechanics Explained. And I hope you guys enjoy this video. I hope you stick around for some more Tempest Rising content. Take care.